Liberal Viewer presents. So Fox News is usually all about the right of corporations to make business decisions, like those involving pricing and discounts. But the usual pro-business bias got put aside when it came to Fox News' support for the ability of sectarian religions to discriminate, as you can see from a story last Friday that began like this. Google, in addition to being one of the world's biggest companies, also has a number of free softwares, uh, software applications that they allow uh, nonprofits, uh, charities, churches and stuff like that to use for free. In particular, something that a lot of businesses use and churches in the past, uh, Gmail, obviously. But you know what? Google changed all that in March. Saying now... If you're affiliated with a church or a religion, you will not get this break. Now, so far, that story is at least accurate in that Google's discount program for nonprofits does exclude churches, but the Fox and Friends story then goes on to use several pieces of misinformation, which I'll get to in a moment, to support the final biased conclusion of the story that Google is exclusively targeting religion and churches, as you can see in the ending of the story here. Yeah, uh, the, the disparity is why would you give it to certain nonprofits, mm -hmm. give it to certain charities, and not all of them? And just draw the. Uh, there was an, uh, an item that we saw that said uh, Google's new commandment is thou shalt not give discounts to churches. All right. Uh, Google that. Of course, I did Google that, and when I searched for Thou Shalt Not Give Discounts to Churches, I found a story from the right-wing propaganda group Newsbusters, based on a more balanced story in Christianity Today, which actually contradicted not only the biased conclusion of the Fox and Friends story that Google is exclusively targeting religion and churches, but also contradicting several of the supposed facts supporting that conclusion, starting with the central piece of misinformation from Fox News anchor Ainsley Earhart in this clip. So it's open to all nonprofits unless that you, unless you're affiliated with a religion or you hire or fire people ba based on sexual orientation. But of course, what Ainsley Earhart said there is not true because as the Christianity Today and even the Newsbusters article pointed out, Google's nonprofit program excludes a lot of groups, particularly groups that exclude others, but not just churches, also sports clubs and alumni groups, plus groups that are political or otherwise controversial and worse, Ainsley Earhart compounded her initial misinformation in the continuation of what she said here. Right. Yeah. So yeah. there's this guy, there's this guy that works for a Baptist church in Kentucky, and he says that they were getting Gmail for free. So he didn't factor that into their budget for the year. Then he gets the rejection email from Google yeah. saying, we're no longer allowing you to do this. So it's $50 a user now. So he's charged uh, $2,500 for their church for this software. Hmm. Now, the problem with the way Ainsley Earhart told that story about the Baptist from Kentucky is that she made it sound like Google took away a discount he'd received in the past, even though the original article in Christianity Today made clear not only that the Baptist from Kentucky was rejected as a new applicant to the program, but also that Google has actually promised to grandfather in any churches already receiving the discount, though, of course, that fact never made it into the Fox News story. But then the crowning piece of misinformation came from that brown-haired guy who's not Steve Ducey, who reacted with the brilliant suggestion you can see here. I have an here. idea. Yeah. Maybe you could be the Methodist think tank, nonprofit think tank, <laughs> and kind of beat them at their own system. And now it would be a great suggestion for churches to pretend to be think tanks to qualify as Google nonprofits, except that one of the specific exclusions in the program applies to, quote, groups serving a primarily political function, such as lobbying, think tanks, and special interests, unquote. Which means this Fox News story made three factual errors in under a minute, all in support of the false conclusion that these Google restrictions exclusively target religion and churches. And that goes beyond spinning the facts to criticize a business decision by Google. It's actually creating facts to mischaracterize what Google did, which is why I'm asking my viewers to use the power of Google back against Fox and give this video a thumbs up, add it to your favorites, share it on Facebook, Twitter, and other sites, or even use that share button to email this video to friends at foxnews.com and ask them, does Fox and Friends owe Google a correction for making three factual errors in under a minute to support the false claim that Google's nonprofit restrictions exclusively target religion and churches? And regarding the real question that Fox News never let its viewers decide, did Google make a good business decision in excluding groups from its nonprofit program that are religious, political, or otherwise might be controversial? I, YouTube, you decide.